We start with that FDA panel unanimously recommending the Moderna booster for emergency use. NBC News Now correspondent Maura Barrett covering that meeting. So Maura, this now goes to the full FDA. Uh, who does this panel think should be getting a booster and when? So this is going to look pretty similar to the Pfizer approval that we saw last month, Allison. But after today's meeting with the FDA, where, like you just mentioned, all 19 doctors voted yes to approve the Moderna booster, it then needs to go to the CDC for the official recommendation. And that's scheduled to happen next week. And that's after uh, J&J &J will be heard uh, with the FDA tomorrow. And now, as for these boosters for Moderna specifically, it's going to be people that are at the most high risk first, right? Similar to Pfizer, like I said. And so Moderna was recommending for people over 65, also those that are over 18 at high risk for severe disease uh, or whose jobs put them at risk or those who are immunocompromised. So maybe somebody that works uh, in a high exposure job, those that work in grocery stores or are traveling a lot, that kind of thing. Uh, and so these booster shots, once it goes through the CDC next week, if it's uh, recommended by the CDC as well, the White House mm -hmm. says they're ready to roll out uh, those extra doses and we'll have them available within weeks. So let's dive into the data here. The FDA signed off on the Pfizer booster after seeing evidence of a, of a decline in that vaccine's effectiveness over time. So Pfizer went from 91 percent effective to 77 percent. But a recent CDC study found no decline in Moderna's effectiveness. So what was Moderna's argument more today for booster approval? Well, it's similar to what we've been talking about as I've been traveling the country covering these ri this rise in COVID cases over the past couple of months, right? The Delta variant has hit people a lot harder, and that's why we've seen a lot more breakthrough cases. And so while the efficacy of the actual vaccine hasn't gone down, the variants of the virus have proven stronger. And so I wanted to hear a little bit from uh, the infectious disease team with Moderna at the, the meeting today with the FDA, and she do dove a little bit more into the data. Take a listen to, to what she told the doctors. We performed an updated analysis of COVID-19 incidence rates in August of this year because we had observed an increase in the number of breakthrough cases of COVID-19 in the study population during July and August of 2021. Prior to July, the maximum number of cases reported in mRNA-1273 recipients in a single month was 23. This increased to 81 cases in July 169 cases in August, with 97% of these cases due to the Delta variant. Now, on top of everything, obviously, the booster is going to be important for people who are at risk uh, to protect themselves against the Delta variant, other variants potentially. But right now, doctors did mention many times throughout the meeting today that it's very important to continue messaging to people that getting those first two doses of a Pfizer or Moderna or your initial dose of J&J &J is mm -hmm. still going to protect you better uh, than, than just getting the booster. You really want to get initially vaccinated first still, Allison. So I want to ask you another question about the booster. Moderna only wants that booster to be half the strength of the original dose. How come? So that's what's interesting, right? And that's the big difference uh, when it comes to what we've been looking at in terms of Pfizer, too. And the, the big thing here is they're arguing that half the dose, 50 micrograms of what normally is 100 a microgram dose uh, is something that they say will still be uh, doable against uh, and help with the immune system um, against the virus there. And then the good thing here, too, they also say, because I don't know about you, but people I know that had Moderna uh, had very severe reactions to their second dose. They say that half of this dose for the booster will provide uh, less side effects. So that's a great thing. And then the other silver lining to that, that means that more of the vaccine, more of the booster shot will be available to more people because they're only using half of the original amount, Allison. Yeah, more. I was just going to ask you, does that mean it'll be less traumatizing for people who had a rough time with it? Glad to hear uh, all of those positives there. Uh, we know this same group meets tomorrow to debate Johnson & Johnson's booster shot. What are you watching for there? So the thing with Johnson & Johnson is that it's always been a, a little lower of efficacy, efficacy than uh, the other vaccines, right? And so right now the FDA is going to be asking a lot of questions around whether J&J uh, &J needs to have a, a booster shot two months after your initial mm -hmm. shot or if it, a six-month cycle will work. And so that's something that the doctors are going to be uh, discussing and analyzing the data around tomorrow. They're going to be voting on the booster shot when it comes to J&J. &J, mm -hmm. But then they're also going to be discussing this potential of mixing and matching. There was yeah. an NIH study uh, that came out earlier this week that said if you get if you got the Johnson and Johnson dose, it might actually be better if you get a Pfizer or a Moderna, something that was an mRNA 
uh, vaccine because then it could help boost uh, the, the protection against the, the virus uh, even more. So that's not something that they're going to vote on tomorrow afternoon, but between the vote on the J&J &J booster mm -hmm. overall and this overall discussion about that potential uh, is what the, the FDA is going to be looking at tomorrow. All right. A whole lot going on in terms of boosters this week. Maura, thank you so much for your reporting. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.